well, this might be a cool shot, but it's also really windy out here on the side of the mountain, so I don't know how the audio is going to turn out. This will be my first hike with the new Apple Watch Ultra. One of the reasons why I wanted to get this watch, um, because of some shortcomings of the previous Apple Watch, is uh, mostly the battery, battery life. I would basically... You alright there? So I would basically choose a halfway point during the hike, not only to take a rest, but sometimes I'll bring an MRE. Um, but I also got to charge all my devices, and I would have to bring an Apple Watch charger because it doesn't use anything but a very proprietary charger. Um, otherwise, my watch wouldn't make it through the, the whole hike. So right now, I've got both the Gaia GPS app running, I got the Apple Workouts running, and also on my phone I got Gaia GPS, but I do have it in low power mode um, just because I don't know how the battery is going to do with two tracking app apps running at the same time. So I'll see how that turns out. Um, it started the day at 89% because another reason I got it is I never sleep with the watch on because it needs a period to charge. And I'm hoping that with not only the large battery life of this watch, but also the quick charging that I can actually sleep with it on now and just charge it while I'm showering and that's enough to get me through the day and another night. Uh, but it started at 89%, so it used about 11% overnight as I was sleeping. I got up here, it was at, I think like 82%, and I was using navigation to get to this location. And that's where I started with the battery life. So I'm gonna keep hiking and anything that I think of about the watch, I'll just bring it up along the way. So one thing I was hoping that the new Apple Watch fix is its friendliness with gloves. So they added this berm around the buttons to not only protect the crown, but the, the button. And then they added the ridges on the button, which do make it significantly easier to use with gloves. But with these full grain leather gloves on my previous watch, um, I would actually wear the watch upside down, especially with the strap on, it would hit the buttons. And this one's actually bringing up the, the tabs, um, but it would actually hit the crown a lot more. So they fixed the, the problem with uh, gloves hitting the crown button. But right now, every time I look at my watch, it's in the app view. And it helps a little bit if I leave the strap undone, but it doesn't completely solve the problem. So the second feature that intrigued me about the Apple Watch Ultra is the dual GPS. Now dual GPS is kind of a new thing. It's been around for a while, but I think, I think it more recently got released to the public. Uh, Cause even Garmin and their handheld topographic GPSs or GPS map, I know a really great name. They didn't have dual GPS as an option until like 2019 or 2020. So Apple advertised the heck out of the Ultra having dual GPS, but they also kind of quietly launched the iPhone 14, which also has dual GPS. And what that essentially does is in a wide open area, it increases its accuracy by double. Um, so instead of a 10 foot accuracy, you get a six foot accuracy. Uh, this is a bad example here. If you're in like a ravine in between two mountains or in a canyon or even just in a really dense side of the mountain, you can get really bad locations and it's called reflection. So GPS is essentially just a radio and all it does is receive. It doesn't transmit unless you get like an in-reach or the new satellite emergency thing on the iPhone. Same thing. It's essentially like light and just like light, it can reflect off of things in reflection might in some cases be brighter than the light source. So what happens is the GPS signal comes down, bounces off the cannon ball, and then it hits you, which is a longer distance. And it, all it is is it takes the time, the clocks that three different GPSs are transmitting for elevation. And then it does some math and it determines where you're at. But if one of those GPSs is giving off a longer distance, it's gonna show you in the wrong location. And my last hike got a really bad example of that to where I just kept jittering about like two miles away because I was in kind of a ravine. 
Now a dual GPS does is it's like your Wi-Fi router. It's got two frequencies that go out, 2.4 to 5 gigahertz. And it uses some math, same satellite, transmitting both those frequencies to determine if that's reflecting or if it's a direct signal because the frequencies act differently, they reflect differently. And if they're both lined up, everything's fine. If they're not both lined up, it's pretty suspect. I don't know if it breaks it that well, or it just kind of ignores that satellite so, signal. The next feature that kind of sold me on Apple Watch Ultra was the fact that it was made out of titanium. Now it's a little suspect about if it was truly titanium, which it likely would be, but also the grade of titanium. There's so many different grades of titanium. Most of it, I think it only has to be like 2% titanium by weight or volume. Um, and it's mostly aluminum, which is just fine. And it does have a lot of benefits over a lot of forms of aluminum, but it's not the titanium that people think of. Now I've had this key bar ever since I first heard about them like a decade ago. It cost me $100 because it is a solid cut of titanium. They just got some titanium bar and all they did was mill it out into this key bar shape. But it's got almost no scratches on it, even though it's always around keys. It's always in my pocket. I've been using it for 10 years and there's no wear. There's barely even a polished edge around it. And it's a higher grade of titanium. And it's not the same color as the Apple Watch because this you can see a lot of the metal grain in it which obviously Apple's not gonna go with that part of a titanium grain because they don't want the grain, the grain to show. Well, I personally like it, but most people won't. They want a nice, clean finish. Uh, so we'll see how that works out because my previous Apple Watch, I took care of it as much as possible, never cracked the screen, but it's just got little scuffs around the lens. But the worst part is it's the grade of aluminum that's harder to anodize. So around the edge of the screen, it's actually wearing the anodized coating. And that's something I don't want if I'm gonna keep this watch for a very long time. So I wasn't gonna upgrade for five years after I got the Series 5, I was gonna get the Series 10. And that made me a little hesitant, but all these things coming together really made me wanna get the new Ultra. So while I'm on the topic of the titanium, I just mentioned next to the watch bands, like the Ultra. Now, all the old watch bands have worked, but these, I guess, are slightly wider because they have their own class of 49 millimeter watch. Um, I really like that the metal class are also titanium, or at least they are the same shade and finish. Uh, the watch is titanium. I really wanted the orange, the Explorer orange, whatever they call it. The problem is I can't wear that in uniform. But the green is a very close second. It looks very nice. It's also the same color green that you'll find in a lot of hiking gear. It matches some of the greens that are in military uniforms. I've heard some people complaining about how difficult this band is, but honestly, first off, I really like how secure it is. It just simply uses tension to keep it from ever sliding out of that loop. And it's a very positive locking system. Uh, but honestly, literally the first time I put it on, I just put it on, pulled it tight, wrapped it around, and slid right in. And so it's slightly difficult to get off. One thing I did notice, the links kind of fold in half on that hinge or whatever you want to call it, that bar that it wraps around. You have to go an even amount of loops down to catch it in between loops on that link up top. If you do an odd amount, it'll land right on one of those loopholes and it won't fold as tightly. So you do have to go down an even amount of numbers. So right now I'm down three loops. So when it comes to the speakers and the microphone, uh, that wasn't really a selling point for me. I don't really use the microphone that much because honestly, a lot of phone calls, I just take my phone out. There's been very few situations where my hands are so full that I end up just answering a lot. It is nice that notifications and stuff will be louder, clearer, and a little more crisp. It's still missing a major feature that even from day one, when I got my Series 5, I wish I had. You can put music on your watch so you can go without your phone, but you cannot listen to the music on your watch. You still need some kind of Bluetooth device, whether it be a speaker or AirPods. Uh, it would be nice to just have very quiet music while working at the desk that is very close to me, so then nobody else has to hear it as much. It would be nice just to be able to play music on the watch speakers, especially now that they've upgraded them. 
just to break the silence. However, the haptics, I don't know if it's just me or if my old watch was worn out or something, but compared to the Series 5, the haptics definitely feel a lot more crisp. It really feels like somebody's tapping on my arm rather than just like a really faint like thud. And I even had the higher sensitivity haptics set on the Series 5. So the new watch face is neat. I'm not sure if it's all the features are completely exclusive to the Ultra, but I do remember seeing it in my watch gallery when I still had the Vive. I don't like all the widgets that are preloaded on this watch face. Of course, you can always change all the widgets to whatever you want. So basically top left, I have current temperature, important for hiking. If there's any rain projected around that, the air quality is kind of just a neat thing to know. It doesn't really matter too much to me. Uh, and the UV index doesn't really hike, matter too much for hiking. Just because I'm not able to fall asleep at that. But normal outdoor activities, I always watch the UV index because I fry pretty easy. The watch face can be either a watch or a compass head. And you can make the orange ring three different things. I just have it set to elevation and incline. And then of course I got sunset, sunrise, which isn't working so well right now. Uh, digital time, so I don't have to read the watch face all the time. My activities. So technically this watch face has 10 complications. You got the eight on the screen and then the hidden one that the watch face actually turns into the compass dial. And then you can choose between three different options. Right now I have the elevation and incline set. So it's a really neat watch face. I don't, I wouldn't use it every day, but that's why it's easy to swipe left and right to change your white watch faces. So I have one for work, one for workout, and then my leisure slash hiking one is this one. Uh, so moving on to the new water features of the watch, it's really neat that it not only has the depth gauge, but through the software, it'll automatically engage the depth gauge as soon as it senses water. So even if you're like swimming in a pool or something like that, or in a lake, it just immediately starts tracking everything you're doing in the water. I think that's neat. I'm not really a diver, so I don't have too much use for it, but it is neat to see as a proof of concept feature that hopefully they'll start including in a lot of watches. And it's always nice and reassuring that much higher waterproof rating versus the regular watch. The design of the case itself is a nice change. I was afraid it was going to be way too bulky with that lip, but I kind of like that it's the classic Apple Watch shape with the lip added on top for the possibly thicker glass, because I don't know if it's actual sapphire, but if they made it thicker, it's just naturally stronger than. But there's also a plastic ring going in between the two layers. And I think what they're doing that, because in the, in the box that it came in, it, it had an arrow pointing to that ring and it cut it. That's where it mentions the dual band GPS. And I scratched my nail along it and I believe it's a glass fiber plastic. So it's a super strong plastic and it might also absorb a little bit of the impact of the screen. Um, kind of doubtful, but it's kind of an, a neat feature that they they're using the new bezel on top of it as some sort of antenna, whether it's the actual cell antenna, which I think is way too long for that. Um, or it's the GPS antenna, which would make more sense. I'm about halfway through my hike, and I gotta get all the way back up there. That's pretty much where I started. So I'm a little past the halfway point, I think. So far, the watch GPS seems a lot more accurate than the phone. Now, they always used to track my hike in both Apple Workouts and Gaia GPS. And they're both off, but they were very similar to each other. Um, so right now, Gaia GPS, which is on my iPhone 11, which is single band GPS, is showing about five and an eighth of a mile. Uh, but my watch is showing almost six miles. It's like two decimals away from six. So what's telling me is that it's picking up more detail to the, the path that I'm taking. It's not cutting corners or anything like that. So it's actually giving me a far more accurate distance, which is, I would say probably the main reason why I got it because every single hike that I go on with my phone and watch, it's just so far off. And even like running on the track, it'll cut across the track. I hate running on tracks just because of that. Um, so I'll do like a larger format track rather than like the standard style. So yeah, so far it's very promising on how accurate it is. I'd say a difference between five and six miles, that's like 20% more accurate compared to my phone. 
which makes me excited for the iPhone 15, which is the one I plan on buying because I want to just get phones every five years apart. And maybe we'll even make like a like an adventure model, a titanium model to match the watch. We'll see. Also, I stepped on a wasp nest and I freaked out a little bit and ran up the hill to get a little bit distance before they realized what was going on. And I dropped my radio and a rock landed right on the screen. So the radio works just fine, but I have no screen. Luckily, I can still just manually enter in channels and I can still put it in scan mode, which is what I do 90% of the time. So a new feature that's, it's not this watch thing, but it's a software thing that recently came out that I really like is the new power save mode. So I don't know if anybody remembers, the old power save would basically put the watch in hibernation. And then every time you wanted to see the time, you would hit a button and it would take forever for a little dim green clock to show up. And it was entirely useless, but the, but the new low power mode is actually useful. It just basically limits communication to your phone. It limits the pings, the GPS. It just limits everything, but doesn't turn off anything. And it pretty much doubles your battery life because even on the, even on my Apple Watch 5, which would die halfway through the hike, it was actually enough battery to make it through the full hike, which was the difference between normal power mode and low power mode. So yeah, it's something I can really appreciate. So I'm about three quarters of the way through the hike, uh, about eight miles. I got a long hike straight up the side of a rocky mountain. Um, and my Apple Watch is still at 60%. And just remember, I started at about like 81, 82% before the hike, but I left it in low power mode because I wasn't sure how the power was gonna do. So I didn't wanna miss any of the hike. Um, so I'll continue recording, but overall my first impressions with the new Apple Watch Ultra is really good. I don't know if it's worth the $800. It's still kind of a niche thing, but it fills my niche. It's just overall, I think I paid 500 for my Series 5 with cellular service. And so this is $300 more. When I say it's $300 more in features, I would say give it a few years and it would be worth the same as 500. But I do believe it is 300 more in features with the whole titanium body being super durable, uh, the super accurate GPS, the really good battery life, and all that together. Um, I like it. So I would recommend it, not really to anybody that's not gonna use these features because it is really overpriced. Anybody that does like outdoor stuff for sure, it's, I think it's worth it. So yeah, I'm gonna hate myself, but it's time to get up that mountain. I'm about halfway up the final leg of the trip. It's the final climb. And I've got that much more to go. There's a, watchtower up there that big rock and there's a saddle in between and that's pretty much where this trail goes up to and then it's still got like another mile on a decent road so i'm at seven hours about nine and two thirds of a mile and i think i got about an hour left because this is the nastiest part i looked at the gps and it's just a bunch of switchbacks not looking forward to that Damn, that's a beautiful view. I am almost there. You can see the light, or not the light tower, the watch tower just up there. And I can faintly hear voices being carried by the wind. It's crazy to think all those sharp rocks between. It's crazy to think that all those pointy rocks behind that big rock is where I was just at.